Let's go to Steve Forbes on all this. Steve, as he was mentioning this, we're, we've, we've learned a little bit more about these rescues and cash infusions. And the one thing that struck me as interesting in the case of First Citizens, uh, buying the, the remaining assets of Silicon right. Valley Bank, is that they actually got it at a $16.5 billion discount. Now, much of that spurred by you know, federal regulators who are trying to make it as easy and enticing as possible. But you multiply that out times a number of institutions, whatever the incentives, who's, who's paying for that? I know the bank is technically paying for it, but the under and over goes to us, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And it means uh, you're going to get less banking for uh, people with lower deposits. Already some banks now are putting on fees, $25, $30 a month if you fall below $10,000, $20,000 minimum. You're going to see more of that. So they're shackling the banking sector. And one of the questions is for entrepreneurs, what's going to fill that void? Is it going to be Tony Soprano or going to be other good organizations <laughs> that come in and make these loans to... Uh, you know something low... against Tony Soprano? You know? <laughs> All right. As long as he stays away from me, we're, we're fine. But they but, don't, right? I mean, to no, your point, and, and, I mean, and, they and don't. So, and that, that is, it's the unintended expectation here. What you do for one, you've got to do for others. So I cannot imagine in a series of trouble banks, if it were to happen, hope it doesn't, we'll do the exact same thing. Yeah, and that, that, that gets to the whole question, though, of how do you prevent the federal government be, uh, from becoming de facto owners of banks? Right. Uh, Signature Bank, one of the things held against that was they're involved in Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, which regulators have made clear they want to run out of business. They don't like uh, oil and gas. If these banks had been in Texas, we know what would have happened there. Mm. Uh, there are other industries they don't like. So you have them picking winners and losers. You see that in Europe. And one of the things that I think is going to really royal banks in Europe is they've created these bonds that the banks could issue after 2008, 2009 to shore up their equity. And it turns out the Swiss pulled the plug on those bonds, shocked people. I think they broke the law on it, so do others. Well, they wiped out the banks of uh, And we should say in times of, of bankruptcies Suisse. or duress, bondholders are supposed to move to the front of the line. The front in of the case, line. The, so, 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 the out of the line. The, so the stockholders came before the bondholders. Very which, weird. Which, which is bizarre. So European banks, which are not as strong as U.S. banks, you may get some uh, black swans emerging there. It, it More. Swiss bank for a while last week. I mean, um, I, I'll ask you what I I was asking Bob Dahl earlier, uh, Steve, this notion that are we over the worst of it? What does your gut tell you? I'm talking about the banks. I think we're over the worst of it, although you're going to get uh, some uh, casualties there. thing to be watching out for, what companies are going to get in trouble uh, since they borrowed a lot, low interest rates forever, not. Right, right. And, and uh, also uh, countries are in trouble. And one of the things that's already come out now is how China is using this uh, crisis to get their claws in countries around the world, like Turkey and others, saying, we'll lend you, we'll lend you great rates, give us your ports and infrastructure and things like that. And so I'm sure our State Department, as usual, is asleep of the switch and what China's moving in this I I situation. And the IMF, which is supposed to take care of countries that get in trouble, often prescribe the worst things, raising taxes, uh, debasing your currency, devaluations and the like. So we got to get our act together on all fronts, financial and diplomatic, because China's moving in on those countries that are in trouble, and that means leverage against us. Um, it, it, the backstop for all of this, or the background for it, is the strength of the consumer. Consumer sentiment survey that showed, you know, un, unusual optimism uh, about where they stand and where they're going. Now, never mind their personal views on. What, what's valued today, like patriotism, religion, all that's out the window, I guess. But but when it comes to money, which is a top concern, they're they're far more resilient than we thought. We're seeing it also on packed airplanes and packed resorts and packed restaurants. And I'm wondering, what is keeping this going? Well, you have certain sects of the economy that are still holding up. Uh, there's still some of those savings left in terms of uh, what happened. And remember, people have been locked down for two, three years. Yeah. They just want to get out, period, uh, for their own sanity. And so one of the things I hope... Well, you, thought, you would think by now that would have been kind I, of I, I think I, I think you're going to see uh, more or less of that in the future, okay. especially uh, after the summer where you want to let loose. And one of the things that's going to happen after 2024 is, are we going to put in policies that get this economy moving? Remember, back in the 1980s, you had energy in a depression, that's agriculture right. in a depression, a lot of commercial real estate in a depression, but the economy is doing well because they had pro-growth policies. Right now, if any growth policies, which are going to make these trouble some areas even worse. Um, I, I know your views on the Federal Reserve. They're, they're, they're well known among uh, those who follow you closely, as do I. Uh, but the feeling seems to be that the Fed now has room to just cool it for a while on interest rates if 
it move at all the remainder of the year. Maybe one hike down the road. The consensus is never right, as you've reminded yes. me, Steve. But, but that is a building view here. But uh, it still has inflation to address. I mean, it's still running at a 6% clip. They want to get it down to a 2% clip. What do you think? Well, uh, in terms of uh, raising interest rates, which simply trash the economy, I hope they do back off. Uh, some are calling for that for the wrong reasons, but I think uh, trashing the economy is not the way to cure inflation. Key thing is stabilizing the value of the dollar, which is, again, starting to fluctuate again. Fed doesn't now there are, to fight inflation. There's plenty of competition to take on the dollar, right? The, the uh, Russians the, the, are backing China's believed to be an alternative currency, right? Yeah, the, the dollar's still in a very strong position internationally uh, because of the strength of the U.S. economy and uh, uses in international trade. But uh, if we continue to debase the dollar, continue to make it unreliable as it goes up and down like a yo-yo, you will see alternatives rise up. Again, not good for good economic growth in the future. So go back to the early 80s. We got it right there. And then actually in the mid-90s, early 90s, great moderation. When Greenspan looked at the gold price, he looked at commodity prices, tried to have some stability, and it worked. Yeah, it did work. It, it did work. <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you.